I'm not ashamed. What would happen under Mosaic law if an animal killed a person? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Exodus on walking through the Bible. It's worth the glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Exodus chapter 21. We're going to be reading from verses 28 to 36. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Exodus 21, beginning at verse 28. If an ox gores a man or a woman to death, then the ox shall surely be stoned, and its flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the ox shall be acquitted. But if the ox tended to thrust with its horns in times past, and it has been made known to his owner, and he has not kept it confined, so that it has killed a man or a woman, the ox shall be stoned, and its owners also shall be put to death. If there is imposed on him a sum of money, then he shall pay to redeem his life, whatever is imposed on him. Whether it has gored a son or gored a daughter, according to this judgment, it shall be done to him. If the ox gores a male or female servant, he shall give to their master thirty shekels of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. And if a man opens a pit, or if a man digs a pit and does not cover it, and an ox or a donkey falls in it, the owner of the pit shall make it good. He shall give money to their owner, but the animal shall be his. If one man's ox hurts another's, so that it dies, then they shall sell the live ox and divide the money from it, and the dead ox they shall also divide. Or if it was known that the ox tended to thrust in times past, and its owner had not kept it confined, he shall surely pay ox for ox, and the dead animal shall be his own. In this chapter we have God giving Moses a set of judgments that would be written in the book of the covenant and therefore form a part of God's law with Israel. The Ten Commandments would also be a part of this law as would the rest of the laws that we find in Exodus and Leviticus. There was not a moral law and a ceremonial law. There was one law for Israel to follow. It should be noted, however, that this was Israel's law. It was not the law for the Gentiles. When we fast forward to New Testament times, Gentiles are never commanded to keep any part of the law of Moses. Both Jews and Gentiles would only serve God under one law, the law of Christ. It is by this law that men and women will be judged, not by the law of Moses. So far in this chapter, we've dealt with different types of situations on how people were to treat other people. When it came to one person killing another person, the punishment was almost exclusively death. However, what happens if someone's animal were to kill another person? That's what verses 28 to 36 deals with. There are many different scenarios to be considered, so let's go through each of them. In general, if an ox, or any animal for that matter, were to kill a man or a woman, the ox was to be stoned, but the flesh not to be eaten. The owner of the animal would not be punished because he didn't do the killing the animal did. This was the general rule. However, in order to avoid confusion, God laid out a few other scenarios too. What would happen if the animal killed a person, but the animal had been known for being dangerous? Was the owner of the animal still not to be punished? The answer to that is no. The owner would then be deserving of punishment for not watching his dangerous animal, and the animal would again be stoned. All animals have the potential to be dangerous, but they can be tamed to the point that even though they could be dangerous, they don't act in a dangerous way. However, there are some animals that simply can't be tamed, and therefore they need to be supervised. The punishment that the owner of the previously known dangerous animal faced was death. In this case though, since it was the animal who killed the person and not the person themselves, their life could be redeemed by paying the, the fine imposed by the judge. What would happen if an animal killed a male or female slave? Because the slave was worth money to his master, the animal would be stoned just as before, but the owner of the ox owed the master 30 shekels of silver, the price of the slave. What would happen if a man had dug a hole, not ensure that the hole was covered, and an animal fell into the hole and died? The one who dug the hole needed to pay the price of the animal to the animal's owner, but he got to keep the dead animal for himself. What would happen if one person's animal killed another person's animal? Well, the animal that remained alive would be sold and the proceeds of the sale would be divided by the two. The carcass of the dead animal would also be divided. There doesn't seem to be a prohibition on eating the dead animal's carcass here because a human life wasn't taken by the animal. If, though, the animal that killed the other animal had been previously known to be dangerous, the owner of the dangerous animal was required to pay the full price of the animal that was lost, an ox for an ox. 
The carcass of the dead animal also wouldn't be divided, but given to the person whose animal was killed. So in this case, the one who was careless with his animal paid a severe price, not only in having to pay in full for the animal that was killed, but also in not being able to share in the proceeds of the dead animal either. In this section and in this chapter as a whole, we see the value that God places on human life. Whether an animal or another human being killed a person, the punishment was almost always death. Even though we may not have the death penalty in many Western cultures as punishment for killing of another, let's make sure, however, that we hold human life in the same high esteem that God does, for we are all created in his image. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord will only hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Exodus chapter 22, verses 1 to 6, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.